great. I'm great. Uh, yeah, I'm great. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Rhonda Lynn, and we are back for another episode of the Social Therapy Podcast. This week, we are talking about the strong black woman. Is it worth it to be so strong? And can we redefine what it means to be a strong black woman? But you already know, before we get started, we have got to give a shout out to our sponsor because they pay the bills around here. Okay. So shout out to Motivated Coffee. You can find their artesian blend on amazon.com. Get your 12 ounce bag delivered with prime delivery in two days. I've been known to get mine in one. This really depends on where you live at, I guess, right? But get your motivation in a cup delivered to you ASAP, okay? The link is in below. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start this episode out talking about a current situation that is playing out in social media as we speak. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Megastar Cardi B has taken blogger Tasha K, better known as Unwind with Tasha K, to court for allegations of slander, of defamation of character. She made some accusations towards Cardi B that really affected her mentally and emotionally. The rumors were so salacious that Cardi B did try to reach an agreement with Tasha, but after not being able to get any ground with her, she said, you know what? We go to court and now they in court. So we're going to see how this play out. But today's episode is not about taking sides or saying who's right or wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out with this fun fact real quick, okay? I know that Cardi B is not black. I know that, okay? But she is raising a black daughter. She is a part of the black community. There are millions of young black girls and women who look up to her. She's a role model. She's an influencer. She says something and people do it. And mostly people that look like us are the ones who are following her. So she's invited to the cookout. And you know what? There are people being invited to the cookout for far less. I mean, they half-ass do a half-ass dance. And all of a sudden, they invited to the cookout. Well, guess what? She's throwing her own cookouts at this point so let's start it out right here now cardi b recently took the stand and she expressed the pain that she has endured as a result of the accusations and the rumors that were spread by the blog in question right she cried on the stand she expressed her pain and people are feeling her they really are and I'm glad that she's doing it because her persona that she expresses out to the world is of this tough woman that cannot be affected. All of the rumors and all of the, you know, comments and everything just roll off of her. And she has like this tough exterior and she's letting us know like I am human. I am a person and I feel. And it's very important for us to make sure that we let people know, you know, regardless of how tough or brown I am, I feel and it's okay. Not only that, but Cardi also had to submit to a blood test to prove that she does not have the STDs that are being spread through this blog about her. It's being said that she has all these STDs and she's sprinkling them like sugar everywhere, okay? Everywhere. Now imagine that. You have the HIPAA laws that are protecting you from having to disclose your medical information to anyone unless you want them to know about it. And she is in a position where whether she wants to or not, she has to. Otherwise, people look at her as if she has something to hide and it must be true. And if it's true, why are you taking her to court? Am I wrong? I'm not wrong. All while doing it with a smile on her face regardless of how it felt inside she did it like it didn't bother her like let's go ahead let's do this i'm tough i'm strong it don't affect me right now on the other side of the coin we got tasha k okay black woman strong personality she is being viewed as the villain here but honestly i don't really see her as being the villain i really don't 
I've been watching Tasha K since day one. I am a day one wino, okay? I'm a fan. She is really paving the way for a lot of bloggers who are coming up behind her. And the way that she does her business is impeccable. But what I did not like is the fact that her husband got on the stand and threw her all the way up under the bus. And when I heard about that, I was like, mm. Mm. Mm -mm. no sir can you imagine what that feels like you had a business that you are building with someone matter of fact if you were day one you already know that she has said before that when she first started her channel her husband didn't even support her but when it started to grow and get bigger he was all in right then they was able to quit their jobs and start to grow this business and Okay, so what I mean when I say like he threw her under the bus, they asked him, why are the videos still up? Why aren't they down? Right? And he replied, and I'm paraphrasing because I wasn't there and there's no cameras allowed in the courtroom, that he has no control over her or the content that's put out on the platform. Excuse me, sir. I just don't believe that. This man is listed as being the content owner, okay? Content producer, okay? The owner of KB Studios, okay? He's the owner, the president, the CEO. He got all the big uh, titles, okay? And he's 50% owner of the company, which makes her, what, 49% or less, depending on if they have other sponsors or anybody else that invested in the company right so she might not even be 49 percent owner so for him to sit there under oath and said he has no control over the content that is put out that is bullshit and i'm gonna tell you why it's bullshit because how many times has tasha k said on her show that she is just the talent i'm gonna let that sit with y'all for a second if you read between the lines she has been telling us for the longest time that she does not do any of the behind the scenes work. She's just a talent. She's an actress. If you look at her other channel, the backup channel, she's a little more vulnerable. She shows more of her personality. She's not loud and boisterous and ghetto and offensive, all that stuff. I mean, well, she has done a few rants on there, but who hasn't, right? But she's not the Tasha K. On, on Wine with Tasha K. And I honestly believe that she, as the talent, did not have control over whether or not them videos went down or stayed up. Because as far as I'm concerned, her husband, the owner, the president, the content manager, not only was like, we not taking it down, but he probably, most likely, allegedly, <laughs> was like you gonna do this video about cardi b you gonna say this that the third i don't care if it's not true this is gonna grow, this is gonna grow our channel this is gonna get us views this is gonna get us followers this is money and she did it because she's an employee and that's why the videos are there and that's why they have not come down and you can fight me on this i know a lot of people don't like her but i like her and this is what i see from watching her channel for since she started it when nobody was supporting her, when she was on her own. Meanwhile, Tasha is on the stand talking in circles, trying to protect her brand, trying to protect her marriage, trying to protect her company, trying to protect her bag, trying to be strong trying to present herself in a way that is opposite of what is going on inside. Let me tell you something, Tasha, real quick, girl. It is time to be not so strong. It is time for you to soften up and show vulnerability. As a woman, our power is in our vulnerability. You got Cardi B over there on the stand crying. Oh my God, I can't even kiss my daughter in the mouth. We don't even know if that's true or not. We wasn't there. We just got to take her word for it. Just like we got to take your word for it. You're making yourself look bad. Being strong is not working for you. 
not in this situation. You have got to show the other side of you because they are, from what I've heard on the other blogs, okay? And I'm not going to mention anybody because I didn't watch like 20 of them. <laughs> They're showing full videos of your content. And it makes you look malicious. It makes you look like, what did Cardi B say? They said, she said, only a monster could come for me the way that she did. And then they watch the videos. They're like, ooh, she's a monster. Right? You have to show them that you're not a monster. You're a wife. You're a mother. Right? You're a nurturing. You are soft. Right? You have many layers about you. And you need to peel back the layers that show your human side for this situation right here. But I digress. Okay, because we're talking about strong black women here. And this situation is showing us how being a strong black woman is not working in her favor. It does not pay to be strong all the time. You have got to let your womanhood work for you. See, when we start acting too masculine, we start to produce more testosterone. And women, we have a lot of estrogen and then we have a little bit of testosterone. But when you start living in your masculine energy, your body starts to produce more testosterone because you need it in order to be in your masculine energy. Then you start, you know, graying hair, you start building muscle, you start getting hairs and un safety places and you start to resemble a man and if you don't want to live if, that's, if you're not about that life then that's not what you should be doing throughout history black women have been portrayed as being unbreakable as being damn near superhuman like we can endure and go through anything and it don't affect us right like us black women don't hurt we don't feel pain that's what all the movies show us as being okay it's only just until recently that we've been able to be seen in a movie as the softer side of us right after we fight the fight then they'll show us in the closet somewhere crying right nobody sees it we gonna cry in the car right i don't like that I really don't. And I'm going to give you some examples of movies of what I'm talking about because we grew up watching these movies and they subconsciously led us to believe that this is what it means to be a black woman and this is how I should be when I grow up, whether you want to admit it or not. So just to name a few, because you know I got my notes right here, right? Let's start with what's love got to do with it. Angela Bassett did a hell of a job playing Tina Turner. Tina Turner went through hell and back and then to hell again and then back again where i watching that movie was hard to watch and it's a movie based off of true events can you imagine what they left out she didn't deserve that yeah she became a superstar but at what price at what price she still has ptsd allegedly revolving around the events of her past that brought her to stardom the next movie I want to talk about is The Color Purple. Need I say more? The whole movie from beginning to end was just messed up. Like, damn. It was just a lot. Okay? The Walking Dead. When they introduced black women into The Walking Dead, they was killing zombies okay they was killing zombies like it wasn't nothing okay they was slay like they was slaying dragons up in that mug and they were stronger and better and fiercer than the men on the show why why they gotta be so strong superhuman strength just hook no thank you <laughs> the help what those women had to go through just to be the help was meant to break them it was meant to break them and they stayed through it. They made it through it. They took care of their families with a couple of pennies that they paid them to run together, to rub together, to go through their bullshit. I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, hidden figures. Okay? Them black women basically gave NASA everything. They wouldn't be what they are to this day. They would be behind if it wasn't for those black women who gave the knowledge that they had, and they were given no credit for it. They were treated like crap. They were not represented. No one gave a damn. 
And how many times have you been at your job and you've done something, you came up with an idea, you put something together and it worked and it made the whole department better. It saved money, all this stuff. And nobody gave you your credit. Matter of fact, somebody else took the credit and didn't even mention your name. This is what's going on. And then you have to smile through it like it don't affect you. It does. It does affect you. But you don't say anything because you being strong. And you know what's messed up about that is no one ever told us as black women that we got to be strong. No, no, no one ever said, you, young black girl, be strong. But we learn how to be strong by example, right? We learn how to be strong by watching our mothers and our aunties and our grandmothers just exist in life, right? Just existing, watching everything that they went through. And especially if you were raised by a single black mother, then you really seen her strength come into play because now she's responsible for the life and the personalities and the well-being of other people besides herself on her own with no help. And it's messed up because it's like, why are this? Why? Why are there's so many black single mothers, right? And I'm not disregarding the fact that there are single mothers of other races, but today we're talking about the strong black woman, okay? There's so many single black mothers because they view us as being strong, right? They don't feel like we need their help. Oh, she got it. She can handle it. She don't need my help, right? My mama did it. My auntie did it right? My grandmother did it, right? If my mom could raise me and my brothers by herself, you surely can raise my child by yourself. You don't need help. Just hearing that, what does that do to you? Now, now imagine living it. Then you got to walk through being strong for your kids so they don't see the hurt. They don't see the struggle, but they see it, right? Because they're absorbing your actions. They're watching you try to figure out how to pay these bills by yourself and how to keep them together and fed and clothed and keep a roof over their head and, you know, going to the, you know, get food stamps or whatever it is that you got to do to make ends meet. And then that starts to cycle all over again because now these kids are saying, well, if my mama did it, I can do it. If my mama did it, girl, you can do it. And it doesn't stop. And a lot of people got a lot to say about, well, if she would have chose better. Miss me with that, okay? Because she trusted someone to allow them to, to pass their lineage through her and then they disappointed her. Nine times out of ten, they were lied to. They were love bombed. And then they were left. Okay. And that's just my viewpoint on it. And I know it's not the same story for everybody, but I know so many people who that is their story, that that's the story that I'm sticking to at this point. All right. So let's move on to the next thing. So what are the characteristics of a strong black woman? Let's go over a few real quick. As a strong black woman, you are seen as being someone who does not tolerate bullshit. You are constantly holding people accountable for their shit. You always see in the potential in someone. And when you see the potential in someone, you are trying to help them reach their potential. Stop doing that, baby girl. Recognize the potential in yourself. Use all that energy to help yourself reach your potential. The strong black woman is seen as having a strong moral compass, a natural nurturer. She channels her strength into others to help pull them up. And in the process of doing so, she disregards her own needs. She's a high performer. She has to excel above everyone else just to be seen as, mm, she all right. 
right? Never good enough. You can have a PhD and your coworkers will still look down on you like who she thinks she is. The strong black woman experiences and overcome extreme hardships and she's able to do so like she's unbothered it doesn't even look like she is affected by the situations that she is constantly being put through because she is seen as being a strong black woman at the end of the day the adversity that she experiences is a main ingredient in who she is okay in her power that she possesses she has a selfless strength that comes from experiencing and having all of these traits that I'm listing today. Are y'all exhausted yet? I mean, it's exhausting just talking about it. It's exhausting just listing off the characteristics. Imagine if you have to be all those things at the same time every day, right? And then still be able to be there. No one talks about the toll that this takes on her emotional, mental and physical health black women deserve a world that does not require them to be strong all the time and i'm not saying to be weak and hey black women let's be you know put ourselves in position to be taken advantage of right because all women need a level of strength but you have to know how to channel it in a way that allows you to still be seen as being a woman to be respected as being feminine right to be respected as being a woman that deserves the same treatment as any other woman out here. And the way that we're going to do that by changing the culture that we are contributing to. Hence, the black woman and luxury movement that is currently happening right now is all over social media. And I love to say black women are finally being depicted in a softer tone, right? They're happy. They're laughing. They're smiling. They're giving love. They're receiving love. They're having the finer things in life and everyone deserves it. But please believe for every video that you see of someone living their best life, enjoying themselves, there is somebody that is like, she don't deserve that. Who does she think she is? That jealousy. Because black woman is supposed to be in the struggle all the time, right? How else is she supposed to have strength? Hmm? How else? So how did this whole strong black woman movement even start? Well, let's take it way back. Because from what I can see, it started with the fact that we weren't even seen as strong black women at first. The first, some of the first stereotypes of black women were that of a Jezebel, right? A highly sexualized woman that was easy, loose, and very promiscuous, right? And then there's the mammy, right? the housekeeper, right? The caretaker, right? Take care of other folks' family so much she can't even take care of her own. And those still, those stereotypes still follow us today, but not as much as the strong black woman stereotype, okay? So it was holding us down and a woman by the name of Mary Church Terrell started a movement called Lifting As We Climb. First of all, that shit is impossible. Think about what I just said. Lifting as we climb. Imagine this. Let's say you're at a gym that has one of those rock climbing walls. And you're climbing the wall and you're lifting weights at the same time. Is it doable? Yeah, it's doable. Is it easy? No. You have to figure out how to lift, lift, and climb with your hands full of weights at the same time. But that was that is what brought us out of the mammy and the Jezebel stereotype into the strong black woman stereotype. And that's what strong black women do every day. They lift and they climb at the same damn time. That's what they do. Okay? That's what we do. So here you are supporting yourself, being there for yourself, having your own back. And you have to be strong and lift and climb 
all at the same time because you don't even know how to accept or ask for help or even make it a requirement. Because honestly, I don't feel like I should have to ask for help. If we're together, if we're in a relationship, why do I have to ask you to respect me? Why do I have to ask for you to treat me like a woman? Like I'm soft, like I'm delicate, like I deserve to be treated better than the boys. You should just do it because of how I carry myself. It should just be a known factor. And the way it becomes a known factor is by making it a requirement from day one, from day one of your relationship, from day one of your job, from day one with your friends, from day one with your kids, with from day one with everything and everybody. It's the way that you carry yourself. Telling someone you're going to respect me is not the same as walking in the room with an air about yourself that says, I am respected for who I am, not for what I do. And when people feel like your bar is set high, then they raise up to it. But when you have the bar set so low for everybody else in your life because you can do it, no one rises to the occasion because what is there to rise up to when the bar is under the floor? And the way that we get past all that is to start practicing self-love. If you love yourself, if you love on yourself, other people will love on you. They will love you. If you respect yourself, other people will respect you. If you have high standards for yourself, then people know they have to come to you correct and not with the bullshit because you ain't going and you are out of their league. Now, my mama always told me, like, there's a bum on every corner. And they have nothing to lose and they shoot they shot at everybody and everything. And you can't sit there and allow yourself to be entertained by the bums. Because they're going to shoot their shot whether they feel like you out of their league or not. But who you're, who deserves your attention is someone that's on your level. And the way you even realize what your level is, is to get to know yourself and who you are. And once you start loving on yourself and discovering yourself and doing the work to find out who you are on the inside, beneath that hard exterior shell that you have, that's when you start to have the experiences that you deserve. That's when you start having the job and the work environment that is conducive to you as a person that's going to help you excel. That's when you're going to start having the relationships that gives you, that feeds into you, that feeds life into you, that makes you better doesn't take from you and deplete you. But you can't have that until you do the work to discover yourself and love on yourself. By, and by doing this, doing this, we change we the culture to change the culture. By doing this, we're teaching our future generations how to heal properly because i'm not saying there's never going to be anything that needs to be healed from because there are bad people out here whether they related to you or not but if you know how to heal properly and stop internalizing everything then you'll be able to be who you were meant to be and live in your purpose and not always living on the defense because that takes a lot of work on the inside and it changes who you are. Like we talked about last week, stress changes your DNA, but it is reversible with the right environment. Culture is just behaviors that are passed down generation after generation after generation. And our culture is already changing, but we are in the middle of the change right now. And I would love to see it change for the better 
than for the worse. If we can change the black woman aesthetic, if we can change the strong black woman aesthetic, then we're really making a change and we're really helping our future children and the future of black women as a whole. And the first way to start loving on yourself is to realize that it is okay to not be okay. Recognizing that it is okay to not be okay does not make you weak. Our strength is in our vulnerability. You have to be strategic on how you use it though. Don't get frustrated and be like, you know what, forget this. I'm about to just shut everybody down. Then I'm going to shut down. That's not how it works. By using your feminine energy and finding strength in your vulnerability allows you to get exactly what you desire out of life. Leave the muscle for the men. Let them handle all that stuff. We weren't made for that. Okay? They have the muscle. Right? See? I have the muscle. <laughs> they got the muscle. Let them use the muscles. Let them build and lift and, and pull and climb and lift as they climb. Let them do all that. Okay? We weren't made for that. We weren't. Because for real, for real, a strong black woman is a healed black woman that accepts herself that loves herself and is living in her true self dr autumn griffin defines self-love as the will to protect nurture preserve celebrate one's emotional physical spiritual and mental health when was the last time that you protected nurtured preserved and celebrated your emotional physical spiritual and mental health when was the last time you lifted yourself up not somebody else but you doing this is the practice of self-love this is how you start the journey of self-love and redefining what it means to be a black woman. What it means to be a strong black woman. Because I mean, once you're a black woman, you're a black woman. But redefining what it means to be a strong one, now that's the task. That's what we're trying to change. That's what we're trying to overcome. And that's what we're trying to make ourselves acknowledge that it don't take all of that struggle heartache pain stress just to exceed in life and it's going to be kind of hard to start that journey right because the strong black woman is selfless and self-love says be selfish and how many times were you told that being selfish was not a good thing trust me it's a good thing. Everybody said, oh my gosh, she's so selfish. Oh my gosh, she's selfish. Yes, yes, I'm selfish. Be selfish. Put yourself first. Put yourself first. Strong black women don't show emotion. Self-love says explore all the emotions. That's uncomfortable. Because you're so used to pushing them down and not dealing with them. And then letting them out on other folks. On other situations. No. Don't spaz out because you got all this emotion pit down inside. Deal with your emotions as they come. Learn how to process them properly. See a therapist. That's what they do. That's their purpose in life. That's what they're here for. Because let's be honest. Everybody has a purpose on this earth, right? And don't get me wrong, I 100% believe that God heals. But then it comes down to how does he heal? We're not living in the Bible times anymore. God is not coming down through lightning and thunder and casting out your pain and depression. He is healing us through the works of other people that he has blessed with talents that were meant to do his work. 
i.e. in the form of a therapist who went to school for 10, 12 years just to sit there and give you an unbiased ear to all the issues that you have and help you process them and move past them and move forward. Because generally, the strong black woman don't have time for mental health. But self-love says we going to make time today. And that's why I will always be an advocate for mental health, for seeing a therapist, for taking care of yourself up here first. Because if you take care of yourself up here, the rest will follow. The heart will follow. The body will follow. We internalize so much of everything that we go through that it starts to affect our body, our health. And the only way to reverse those things is to deal with it properly. And the only way you can deal with it properly is to find someone who knows how to guide you into healing properly practicing self-love ultimately changes the way that we view ourselves how we view other black women and how we carry ourselves in the street we're no longer suffering in silence y'all someone hurt you get it off your chest don't say it with your chest because we not Kevin Hart and that is too aggressive for me. I'm not trying to have no gray hairs on my chest. Yes, gray ones. That's the stress. <laughs> we are letting people know how they made us feel and how it affected us. And don't try me again in a feminine healed way. Practicing self-love teaches us how to protect and preserve our mental health. And that's all I want for us. That's all I want for us and our future women and men. Everybody needs to practice self-love. Women, men, everyone else in between. If you love yourself and you accept yourself for who you are and what you are, then you can give that energy out into the world and you can receive that energy back. We live off of like vibrations you can feel when the energy changes in a room when somebody walks in you can feel when things ain't right and you can feel when things are right and let's get used to feeling when things are right and when things are good let's tune in to that frequency stop looking for the bad surround yourself with the good so I'm going to close this episode out with saying this. Let's prioritize self-love and mental health. Let's redefine what it means to be a strong black woman for ourselves, for our daughters, for our nieces, and for our future generations. Let's do it for our sons, for our nephews, for our husbands. Because they need to see what a healthy, strong black woman is so they can start receiving us in that way so they can heal too. If you enjoyed this episode and you know someone that could use this message, make sure you share this with a friend or a family member or anybody, right? Also, make sure you follow this page and hit the like button and leave a comment and let me know what you think about what we talked about today. We're also on Spotify, Apple, Google Play, all that, okay? And join our Facebook group, follow us on TikTok and Instagram so you can stay up to date on what's going on and what we'll talk about next. And if you want to be on this show and have this conversation with me or, any, or on any topic, hit me in my DM and we can set it up. But until next week, peace. Yeah, I'm great. I'm great.